And I knew from my Geology 101 courses that the similar clay layer is in Denmark, which they call the Fiske layer, in the cliffs south of Copenhagen. So that piqued my interest. I said, OK. I was still studying my foraminifera for surfaces, but now I took it seriously. I said, OK, I'm going to determine how the foraminifera went gradually extinct. I was not chasing meteorites or whatsoever. So I looked them, I counted them. Uh, and you have big species, small species, all in all about 35 species. One lives at the surface, the other ones go to deeper areas, reproduce there, and their offspring goes back to the surface. And they're intermediate ones, and they are very elaborate. So regarding modern foraminifera, they live at the surface in very different habitats. So it's not a homogeneous group which behaves as a, as a bulk. No, if you change the temperature of the seawater, or if you make it the photic zone a little bit narrower, if you change the oxygen content, whatever, uh, there are different tolerances for these species. So I expected one after the other to go extinct. And I just wanted to see which one went first. So I counted them. And the sedimentation rate was about five centimeters per thousand years. So I took samples every five centimeters. And absolutely nothing changed just before that 10 centimeter thick clay layer. So that piqued my curiosity. And I said, OK, if the foraminifera don't do nothing, what else do I have? So I started to turn into geochemistry. So, so, sorry, so basically what you discovered in the, at this time is that the extinction or the change in foraminifera was very abrupt. Very abrupt, without any announcement before. 